How's everybody doing? Awesome. Uh, how are you enjoying the conference? Perfect. Um, I just first I want to start by saying how grateful I am and how blessed I feel to be amongst everybody here and to be at this conference. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And um, I'm going to share my story with you today. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, basically, about how when you believe something, you can create it. You can succeed at anything that you put your mind to. And I want to I want to show you this through my story, through my personal story. When I was 19 years old, I was diagnosed with stage 4B Hodgkin's lymphoma. The doctor gave me three weeks to live. At that moment, I had I had a choice: Am I going to accept what she's saying to me, or am I going to push that aside and create the life I want? I wanted to live, so I chose to live. When someone tries to tell you something, their thought is an energy, just like Deepak Chopra said. Everything is energy. The thought's an energy which turns into a feeling which creates your life. If I was to accept the fact that I was not going to live, then I could have died. But instead, I pushed that energy away and said, no, I'm going to beat this, let's go. I think I had maybe two bad days in the whole six months of chemotherapy. Um, after I was done chemo, my doctor said, there's a huge chance you can't have children. Well, you could be sterile from the chemo we gave you. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to believe that. <laughs> um, I love kids, so there is no way. And I, 11 days after my last chemo, I was pregnant with my daughter, Isabella. Uh, she's six now. She's amazing. She's beautiful. She's healthy. She's out of this world. And um, it's funny because even at, when I became pregnant, I was confused. I was scared. I was, I was, I was 20 years old, okay? Just finished chemo. Um, I had fought a drug addiction previously. I was eight years sober. I was kicked out at 16. My family was very rough, okay? Uh, my step-grandma was in jail for murder. My family was drug dealers. I was on the streets. I overcame addiction. I'm eight years sober. I just on June 8th, I got eight years. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm 20 years old. I just finished chemo. I've been sober a year. I'm not done high school. Uh, and now I'm a cancer survivor. Like, I'm freaking out inside because now I'm pregnant. Even though I wanted a child, I'm thinking, God, how am I going to do this? <laughs> so I... Um, what I did was, I, I went to the water. That's where I find peace and, and tranquility. And if we ask the universe or ask God for an answer, we'll receive it. And the message I want to portray today is that the universe is always on our side, on our side if we tap into it. And I went by the water and I said, God, like, what do I do? What do, what do I do right now? And I heard a voice come through that said, keep her, she's a gift. And I thought, whoa. Um, I didn't even know she was a girl. I wasn't even, she was only three months in my stomach, so we couldn't even find out it was a girl. I decided to, to keep her and ended up being a girl. I kept her, and she's been the most beautiful gift I've ever had. Um, there, was, there was a point where I had to, I had to be tested again for cancer. And, um, and it's funny because this is where the, the whole thinking about what you want to create in your life really applies. And um, the first year after chemo, they could, not, they could not test me to see if my cancer was gone because I, had, I was now pregnant. They couldn't do ultrasounds. They couldn't do CAT scans. They could do nothing. So I went a whole year waiting to find out if my cancer was gone. But in my mind, people would say, isn't that hard? Isn't it hard to wait? I'm like, I'm not waiting for anything. I'm cancer free. <laughs> so again, that's the power of the mind. A year later, um, I did go for a test, actually. It was six months. My daughter was six months old. And they found one lump here. OK? And I was, I was kind of shocked. But they found a lump in my, in my chest. And I had four tests. The first one came back positive. The second one came back positive. Uh, ultrasound, CAT scan. 
The third test, I had my daughter in my arms, um, and my, my doctor called me personally, and she says, she says, Emily, she goes, it came back slightly positive. I'm like, what, what is slightly positive? <laughs> My God, like at this point, like I could wring your neck. So slightly positive, I thought, okay, what is slightly? She goes, it's back, but we have to send you for one more test to confirm. And each test goes into deeper layer, layers of the cells. Um, I put down the phone. I had my daughter in my arms. I held her up, and a tear just dropped from my face. And my daughter reached out her hand, touched the tear, and smiled. And I thought, there is no way I'm going to be sick. I just beat this. I have a child. I need to be her mother. I put her down for, for, for her nap. I laid on my couch. And um, I visualized this lump right here. And I scooped it with my hand and rejected it. And I said, you don't belong here. This is my body. You know, so beat it. <laughs> And um, I went for my last test in Montreal six years ago, sorry, seven years ago, yeah, time frames, <laughs> and um, the results came back negative, and I haven't had cancer since. So, awesome. Yeah. Um, since then, uh, since then, I... I took control over what I wanted to do in my life. I always wanted to be, I realized I wanted to be a motivational speaker. So after my treatment, I went back to school for business administration at university, graduated. I bought a house because I wanted to own my own house. I started my own speaking career. I became spokesperson of the Canadian Cancer Society in Ontario, in Canada. I was speaking at schools, charities, um, conferences, women's conferences, uh, businesses. I was in theater, I was acting in theater, film, teaching Latin dance. I started a Latin dance studio with my friends. Um, I just like exploded. It was like, when you come so close to death or you realize that life is so valuable, you know, you want to express and do everything you can do. And that's what I hope everybody in this room decides to do for themselves. It's just everything they feel they want to do and be who they are. Just like Jeff says, be just be who you are. And um, that's what I did. And I always wanted to move to Montreal. I was from Ontario, and I found my way there. I moved there alone with my daughter and built my name, built my company, built um, my career as a speaker. And my life is beautiful. It's not one uh, negative thing around me in the, at the moment. Everything's perfect. And... Um, that's my message. My message is that you can do whatever you want to do. You put your mind to it and you can do it. It's not always easy. <laughs> Nothing's ever easy in life. Uh, but you can do anything. And I'm going to close with um, a text I got actually two hours ago. I was standing in the bathroom. And as um, a speaker and as you know, someone who overcomes challenges, I think we have an obligation to spread the love and to spread the word and to support people going through similar things. And there's a girl in high school who has cancer in Montreal and she, um, she had a really hard time going back into school. Like, she's bald. She felt awkward. Um, she didn't know how to socialize. There's a lot of emotional and mental things that, that become difficult after you come out of treatment. So I wrote her a letter saying, be strong, I've been through this, I told her my story, I said, be strong, you gotta be who you are, I said, this is very normal, I said, you're a lot more wiser than people your age now, so you're gonna feel awkward, you're gonna feel that things are very different for you, I said, but you're actually wiser and you're gonna progress further than you ever thought, and I just kinda wanted to boost her. I never met her, and she couldn't, at, when I wrote her the letter, she couldn't even put a sentence together. She couldn't even write a sentence because the chemo messed with her brain. And I just got a text from her teacher before I came on stage saying, saying that she just finished writing an essay and, in the, and she wrote a whole essay on a book. And at the end, she, the girl had written, her name's Lena, she wrote, uh, you always have to be strong and never give up. 
and you are a warrior. And those were words I had given to her. So I just felt like, like, it's a miracle when we can spread our message and spread love, you know? Thank you.